speak today on the subject, in a sudden moment, a new Pentecost. In a sudden moment, a new Pentecost. Our assignment today takes us to the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a book that is written as a testimony of the church. And the author of this book, it's Dr. Lucas, Dr. Luke. He's able to capture the stories and able to capture the life of the first church and the work of the Holy Spirit. The book is a very important book for us and our history as Christians. The book shares the stories, and in particular, what is going to be our assignment this morning is chapter 10 of a man named Peter. Peter was a disciple and apostle of Jesus. At moments, Peter teaches us so many different things. He is the one that is hot-headed, and when they are in the Mount of Olives and the army comes to arrest Jesus, takes out his sword and cuts the ear of the soldier. Peter is the one that denies Jesus, but is also the one that is restored in Tagba. And Peter is anointed by the Holy Spirit in chapter 2 and preaches the Word of God and over 3,000 come to know Jesus. So Peter's story is a powerful story. He is a man that is walking through the different areas of Israel and in particular arrives in this area called Lydia. And Lydia, this area, there were a number of believers that had come out of that witnessing time when the Holy Spirit came. And in that area, he is called because someone has died. Tabitha had died, and they called Peter, and Peter was so powerful, anointed in the Holy Spirit, that performs a miracle. And this miracle is a miracle of resurrection. Can you believe that? So because it is a miracle of resurrection, the word spreads out throughout this region called Jaffa. Today, it is a beautiful, beautiful coastal area that I was just there about four weeks ago with my wife. We was just chilling by the beach, bro, <laughs> just watching the nice, the nice environments around there. And it's right next to Tel Aviv. There he goes and he visits the community, performs the miracle, and ministers to the community. So this is the context in which we are in. There... He stays at the house of this guy named Simon the Tanner. Simon was a man that was a Gentile. And a Gentile is that one person that was not of Jewish background, but he was a man that was in the business of carving animals and making the, the tanning on the skin of the animals. Therefore, not only was he an outsider of the Jewish community, he was an immigrant worker. He was a person that was in business. He was someone that, which business, many, many, many consider to be a dirty business. Dirty literally because when you carve animals, what's going to happen is that the carcasses need to be disposed and therefore... What you have is then a man that lived in a house that smell. That's one story. On the other hand, there is another person about 50 miles from Joppa in this city called Caesarea Maritime. Caesarea Maritime was a very important city for the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire will settle in certain places, and when you go to Caesarea Maritime, it is the place where Ben-Hur, the movie, was recorded. It was a beautiful poor city and one of the most important cities that was built to showcase the power of the Roman Empire. In that city, there was a centurion, a man that lived, that was a pious man that lived in that community. His name was Cornelius. 
He was in charge of 600 soldiers, and there were some specific characteristics with him. One, not only was he in charge, but he was a man that was very generous. And the Bible speaks in chapter 10 of Luke, I mean of Acts, that he was a man that was generous, but he was also a man of prayer. But wait a minute, who had preached to Cornelius? How did Cornelius come to be a generous man that supported the poor, but also was a man of prayer? We're going to unpack this story and see how both of these stories connect and bring about us a new Pentecost. So let us go to Acts chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. And we're going to take a couple of these passages and kind of unpack them to see what God has in store for us this morning, in Acts 10, verse 1 and 2, we read, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called an Italian regiment, a devout man. Notice that. A devout man, that means that was a man that was religious, a man that was committed, a man that, that loved God, and one who not only loved but also feared God with all of his household and was always helping people in need and he was generous to the people and pray to God always. As I mentioned to you, Cornelia was a very important public leader. He was an army guy, but he was also a man that was generous and was helping the poor, but it was a man of prayer. Verse 3. About the ninth hour, the ninth hour, it's measured from 6 a.m. or when the sun rises. So we will say it was about 3 o'clock when he had, when we, we had a vision. An angel of God came to him saying, Cornelius. So this is at 3 o'clock. This is a time where like we, 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 we don't necessarily are expecting a visitation of an angel, right? And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? Other translations say, What's up? <laughs> In other words, because he was a military man and a man of action, he was like, What up? <laughs> the angel appears to him and he says, what, what, what is it? What is it? Immediately he responds. And then the angel said to him, your prayers and your alms, in other words, your prayers and your generosity have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Point number one. In a sudden moment, the Holy Spirit answers your prayer. In a sudden moment, the Holy Spirit answered the prayer of Cornelius. In a sudden moment, the angel of God came to Cornelius. It was about 3 o'clock when the angel of God broke through and appeared in front of Cornelius. In an unexpected time, God appears in your life. In an unexpected time, when you least expect it, God appears with you wherever you're at. No matter if it's 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, even if it was last night as you were boogie down, God appeared to you and tell you, you got to get to church. In a sudden down. We must learn then to recognize the voice of God when God speaks to us in these sudden moments. We recognize the voice of God, and we must be ready to respond. I am also here to tell you that our, pray our prayers bridge God's direction for our life. So here's Cornelius. He is praying, and as he prays, the angel comes in, and direction comes to him, a specific direction that is going to set forth one of the most impacting things that we will see later on unveil as the beginning of the Gentile church. In a prayer time, there's a bridge between purpose and there's a bridge between your direction. He has a specific instruction that he wants to give you so that he could shape you and your future in this particular time. Then why are we so fearful to hear the voice of God? 
why are we are more um, prone to being, being covered and hearing the voice of God and his plans and our visions. God still speaks. And we tend not to hear him because we are so busy in our own stuff. And even through the fears of our life, his voice can break through. And we must be ready to say, what is it, Lord? Some of you guys are ready to say, what is it, Lord? You have been praying and you are ready to say, what, what is it, God, that you want me to do? What is it? You are asking for God's direction. You have been praying. And today there's a time of confirmation for you for that prayer that you have been saying. What is it? What is it, Lord? What is it, Lord? What is it? You must act. You must respond. There is an action and a correlation. We just can't sit. We must respond. We are invited to respond. Your prayer. Vos church, your prayers, your generosity, your kindness has come up to the throne of God. Vos church, your prayer, your generosity, your kindness have come up to the throne of God. And it's a matter of time before the unexpected shows up for the word of God that he wants to reveal to you. There is a sudden answer being prepared for you that will redirect the future of your life, the destiny of your generations and of your family. There is a sudden moment that is being orchestrated by the Holy Spirit to invade you in the moments of your life. Who is this message for this morning? That hungry person that has been praying just like Cornelius about a breakthrough in your life. Where there's a sudden moment that is coming. Chapters but continuing on verse 6. Peter, on the other side, in Jaffa, he's lodging. He's staying, in other words, with Simon the tanner, whose house was by the sea. And he will tell you what you must do. Look at the connection, right? Here's Cornelius, and you comes. He tells him, go to Simon, who is in Jaffa. And Simon is here in Jaffa, and Simon is going to tell you what to do. Let me tell you the connection is here is that the man of God has a word of God for you. The, the person that continues to be in relationship with God has a connection to the answer of other people. God is going to place you and position you in places where you're going to be that Peter for so many people. And God is going to put you in your work, in your surrounding, in the mall. And God's going to say, go tell this person there is something that they're waiting for. There is something that they need. And I'm placing you in that environment. Point number two. In strange places, the Holy Spirit tells you what you must do. I mean, check the environment in which Simon is in. Peter was staying in the house that was deemed unclean by the Jewish law. How could this be? The tanner was the one that stripped away the skin of the dead animals. A house that was filled with a horrific stench. And by Peter staying in the home of the Gentile tanner, that dirty of all dirtiest places. Can you believe that? God was breaking down the barriers and preparing Peter as a vessel for a blessing to the Gentiles. So not only was he going to be the instrument, but God was doing an internal work in Peter, preparing him by placing him in a stenching place. Let me tell you that the Holy Spirit is not afraid of your dirtiness. He's not afraid of how much you stink. He's not afraid of going into your house. He's not afraid of going into the places where you feel, how could God invade this place? That place is the place where the Spirit will visit you. The stinky places, in stinky places, Jesus sends his servant and his grace. To stinky places, yes. Maybe you feel that your house has stench, that you feel embarrassed and you may think, how could it be that God could visit my home? The Holy Spirit says, there, I'm going to bring revelation to you. There, I'm going to appear and I'm going to give you direction to set you in a new, in revelation to set you in a new direction. Your house, you may feel 
that for generations have been full of tanners and shame and all kinds of things. But there's a sudden thing that's coming for your house. There's a sudden thing that's coming for your environment that's going to set apart and set you apart in Jesus' name. In this place, in this stinky place, the Holy Spirit is revealed. Interesting for me is to discover that back then there was a huge emphasis on the Holy Spirit being revealed in the temple, being revealed in the religious place, being religion in that which considers sacred. But Jesus always surprises us where he decides to reveal himself. In the more stinky places, that's where he decided to reveal a revelation that sets apart the direction of the entire Gentile church, which is you and I. It is incredible to see that God is not blocked. He is not locked to this four square. It is beautiful to experience the presence of God in this place. But we are called to be ambassadors of his goodness out in the world. Because God is going to place you in these places where you need to come out and really be the church that we are. And be a voice. And be a voice of God in the midst of those places. Come on, who am I talking to this morning? A church that loves God, loves the presence of God, enjoys the presence, experiencing the power of God. But it's time for us to come out. It's time for us to go into places and not be scared because we are anointed by the power of God. Because we are anointed to go to the street, to go to the prostitute, to go to the rich person, to go to the executive and tell them. There's a word for you. And God loves you. In a strange context, then purpose is revealed, point number three. In strange context, the purpose is revealed in a perfect time. If that purpose would have been revealed before its due time, it would have messed it all up. And maybe that's how you feel, that you've been praying and you're thinking, God, what's my purpose look like? But you know what? God is, has, has an assignment with you so powerful that he is protecting you when his due time will come. Then he will reveal the perfect purpose with you. If revealed before his due time, we will mess it up. So you don't want to anything until the spirit speaks and breaks through. You do not want anything until the Holy Spirit breaks through and speaks to you. Then you move. There is a time and a season for everything. There's a time and a season for purpose to be revealed. There's a time and a season for purpose under heaven. You don't want to get married too soon. You don't want to have a house too soon. You don't want the pulpit too soon. There is a purpose in which God is keeping you. And until then, that you hear the Spirit. And you move in his obedience, things will look better. Some may feel during this season that you have been overlooked because you were not chosen, but it wasn't your time yet. Some may feel, you know what, I was over, overlooked or, 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 or a position was, was overpassed uh, because of whatever reason and, and you feel I might not be living in God's purpose. It's okay for those doors that are closed because the purposes of God are so perfect that when his time comes, he is not going to pass you through. But you know it's my time for my God to enter into this purpose that he's called me to do. And that's all because he loves you so much that he hides you in obscurity until it's due time. Did you hear that? Because he loves you so much, he hides you in obscurity until it's due time. Precious and valuable things are hidden in obscurity until valuable times are coming out. When we go to a hotel, what do we do? We press. When we have in our houses, when we got in our bank, our valuable things are protected. Some of you are protected by God. And God is saying, hold on, mijo. I got you. There's a purpose when I'm going to unlock in you that things are going to be set for that are so valuable, that have the power to change destiny, that have the power to change your family, that have the power to change your life. Because your purpose is so much potential, so much potential God is holding to reveal fully and unveil this for you. Verse 11 through 9, or 9 through 11 continues. And this is interesting because 
That purpose for Cornelius and for, and for, and for Peter, it's revealed the next day. <laughs> Did you hear that? The next day. Tomorrow. When we least expect it. The next day. Someone needs to hear this today. The next day is tomorrow and God has a purpose for you. The next day may be two days from now, an hour from now, six hours from now, six days, six years from now. But there's a perfect purpose that's going to set you apart and move you forward into destiny. It says that, meanwhile, Peter went up to the housetop, to the rooftop, to pray. And it was about the sixth hour. Then he became hungry and wanted to eat. But while he made red, while the food was being made ready, he had a vision. And from heaven he saw an object like a great blanket that bound, was bound in the four corners, descending to him and led down from the earth. Something happened the next day. There was a revelation that was unveiled for Peter. In this place that stunk, Peter went up to pray. Peter went up to the rooftop to pray, and the Spirit gave him a vision. What Peter, prayer and vision is telling us is that we must continue to pray in the midst of what we're looking for to be revealed. You must continue to pray and bend your knees. God's vision God's vision not only goes against the customs and, the sh and shatters the belief systems of Peter, but are revealed through prayer. God's new revelation is graceful and is equal for all. He comes in and he gives this revelation to Peter in the middle of a moment where he is questioning even what he is seeing. God tells him, here's all these animals the vision he's having are all the animals of pure and impure. So he's looking at it from a religious perspective, which is Leviticus chapter 14 and 16, and says, God, what do you mean kill and eat? These are impure and, um, and impure animals. I could eat this kind of animal, and I can't eat this kind of animal. But what's happening here is that Peter's epistemology, Peter's way of religion, Peter's way of seeing, Peter's way of sensing, who were becoming the obstacle for seeing the revelation was being dealt with. And that's what's really going to happen with you because this word is not meant just for religious people. This word is meant for those that are willing to break through whatever religiosity you have and believe and grab what God has in store for you. So let me tell you, I'm speaking to a mature church today. We've been in this journey for about five years or so, but there is some meat that's coming for us that we have to grab into the Spirit. And as we do so, we're able able to break through even those things that say nah that's not possible that this building could be ours no that's not possible that this uh, that this church can own this entire block no that's not possible well I'm talking to you I'm talking to those that believe I'm talking to those that know that when you hear the voice of God you break him through all the things that have religiously blocked the word of God from coming into you and that's what's happening to Peter that's exactly what's happening. The dude is like wrestling. But you know what is so crazy? Because as he sees that, he surrenders. So there is hope for us that whenever we're doubting, we surrender in prayer. And prayer does that change internally that then exposes itself externally. So Peter is transformed. He is changed. And he says this. Actually, he remembers what Jesus says. And Jesus, he was with Jesus. Called the crowd in Mark chapter 7, verse 14 to 20. And said, the food that you put into your mouth doesn't make you unclean and unfit to worship God. The bad words that come out of your mouth are will make you unclean. Did you hear that? Verse 17 of Mark 7. Don't you know what I'm talking about? You surely know that the food that you put into your mouth cannot make you unclean. It doesn't go into your heart. It goes into your stomach. And what happens next? It comes out of your body. <laughs> right? So kill and eat, Peter. 
At that moment, he remembers what Jesus had taught them. Kill and eat, Peter. Kill and eat. Because the food is not what makes you unclean. But saying Jesus said to them, what comes from your heart is what makes you unclean. What comes out of your heart is what makes you unclean. Out of your heart comes evil thoughts, vulgar deeds, stealing, murder, unfaithfulness in marriage, greed, meanness, deceit, indecency, envy, insult, pride, and foolishness. That's what makes you dirty. I'm going to repeat them again. Bad words. Evil thoughts. Vulgar deeds. Stealing. Murder. Unfaithfulness in marriage, greed, meanness, deceit, indecency, envy, insult, pride, and foolishness. Are any of these things making you, making me and your home unclean? Today is a time to confess that to God. Today is a time to be able to say, Jesus, yes, in this perfect moment, in this perfect time, I recognize that is a matter of the heart. <laughs> it's always a matter of the heart. It's not what comes in, but it's what comes out of our heart that makes us impure. In a, for, in a perfect time, then God orchestrates a divine, a divine encounter with these internal things of Peter, right? And, he, and he's dealing with him, and he's able to say, yes, this is it. So we are put in this place this morning, also confronted by these verses. Two more points and I'll be done. Another thing that happens here is that in a perfect time, God restores the view of the other and relationships to fellowship with Peter. So Peter now then receives this word now has to go to Cornelius, and now he's coming in with a new vision because now he's not looking at it through the eyes of a religious Leviticus 14 and 16, but he's looking at it through the eyes of love. And as he comes into the space, he comes and he visits, he takes off, the Holy Spirit speaks to him, and he goes and goes to Jaffa, from Jaffa to Caesarea Maritime, and he enters Cornelius' house. And when he enters Cornelius' house, you're able to see that in the chapter, he sees them in the eyes of love. And he sees them as his brethren, not as an unclean man, but as someone that's loved by God. That's what happens to us when the Holy Spirit comes and he liberates us from prejudice and liberates us from, from judgment, liberates us from all these bad views that we have about humanity, we're able to see the world in the eyes of love. We're able to see each other and those around the world with the eyes that God sees them, with eyes of love. So we are able to love nations. We're able to love each other. Oh, do we need that kind of anointing? That when we enter spaces, we're not judging right away, right? Because when we enter spaces, we're like, man, yo, look at the way they're dressed up, right? Look at this, look at that, look at this. Look, you're measuring, you're using, you're calculating. No, stop. When we enter spaces, let's use the eyes of love. That we're able to see people filled with the Spirit. Because when we start damaging each other, if that is happening, then what we are doing is tearing down the Imago Dei, the image of God, and the Imago Spiritu, the image of Spirit, and the Imago Christi, the image of Christ in each other. So when we enter spaces, no matter then who, what level we are, well, who, who you are, whether you have or not a degree, or whether you are rich or you are poor, we are all the same before the cross and in the eyes of love. So there's healing that happens for the community and the community begins to live in purpose. Final point. I saw Nena around here. Is she here? 
That was like, key, come up. <laughs> Final point. In a sudden moment, we experience a new Pentecost. So now Peter goes in, and in a sudden moment, the Holy Spirit descends on this community. Let's fast forward a little bit and go to verse 37. When Peter was liberated from the sin of prejudice, he's able to share freely the story that changed his life, right? We're able to share to anyone that comes around us because we've been changed by Jesus. So when he is in that context, he begins to share about Jesus. And the first thing that he shares about is that Jesus is Lord of all. Jesus is Lord of the nations that recognize him as Lord. This is a change in the paradigm. Before, until this moment, the only ones that had known Jesus were the Jewish community. All the ones that were in the upper room, all the ones that received the Holy Spirit, and all the ones that had communicated, they were Jewish descent. But now Peter has a different vision, and that different vision that he has is a vision where he sees Lord God being Lord of all nations. Beautiful, isn't it? That God is the Lord of all the nations. That God is the Lord of all of his creation. That God is the Lord of all of the world. And what does Peter do? He testifies. He gives testimony. That's what we are called to do in the spaces that we are invited to give testimony. What is testimony? Is that just a fancy word of sharing Jesus? Sharing your life story. Sharing what we heard from this young lady. Sharing with those that are also oppressed or also have been captive or also have been bonded by this world. And something remarkable happens. Let's all go there to Acts chapter 10. Verse 37 and 38 on. This, this is fascinating. Peter's telling them about Lord, the Lord God, is Lord of all, sharing the story about Jesus' sacrifice that died in the cross. He's sharing about, he's sharing about the testimony of the miracles that they're seeing. But while Peter <laughs> was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. While Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And the believing Jews, there it is, who had come with Peter couldn't believe it. <laughs> couldn't believe that the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on outsiders, non-Jews. But there it was. They heard them speaking in tongues. They heard them praising God. And the beginning of the Gentile church is established at that moment that has reached you and me until this moment. So, the story starts with Cornelius, a Gentile, a person like you and I, that's devoted, that's gracious, that gives. The Holy Spirit breaks through, gives him a word through the angel. He's going to tell you what to do. Peter's here. He's chilling. He has just performed a great miracle. He's in a house as a stenchy house. The Holy Spirit breaks through as he's praying. He goes to the rooftop and he continues to pray. Some of you need to continue to go to the rooftop. Continue to go to the rooftop. 
Continue to go to that room, that secret place, that war room, whatever you call it, in your car because your prayer is coming through. The Holy Spirit suddenly is going to bring about a word for you. The Holy Spirit suddenly is bringing a new Pentecost for you. The Holy Spirit is suddenly bringing you a response to you. The Holy Spirit is bringing a word for you. So hang on in there. You know why? Because you're beautiful. You know why? Because you're so valuable. You know why? Because he's protecting you in his purpose. And he has you right there, right here, right now. He has you. He's holding you. You're just waiting. Continue. That's the hard part. Continue. Hold on. Continue, my friend. Yeah, you're praying for that job? Continue. You're praying for that promotion? Continue. You're praying for that house? Continue. And be attentive to God because something is coming in a sudden moment. You are going to have a new Pentecost that you are going to experience in a sudden moment. In a sudden moment, as Peter was preaching the Word of God, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. There was no formula, no manipulation, no laying of hands. There was really only the Word of God that was being preached. Let me tell you what I just saw right now. I saw you preaching the Word of God and the Holy Spirit falling in so many different forms. Most church, prepare yourself for the greatest anointing of preaching of the Word that has come to our church. We are going to preach the Word of God in places and in spaces that we have never experienced. And the Word of God is going to come with an answer for the community that we need. If you believe that, I want you to stand up today and praise Jesus with me. Praise Jesus with me because he is here and his word is falling right now on us, on you, right there, right now. You may say, God, I need this word for me today. I need it right now, Lord. I've been praying and I want to continue to pray, but a new Pentecost is coming for you. That that is your portion this morning. And, and, And the people were there who were praying. And they were looking at each other now in love. And as they're there, and they're preaching, and Peter's preaching, the Spirit of God felt. And a new Pentecost was experienced for this community. The first Gentile community was in power in Karabaya. There was power that fell in there. There were miracles that came for those people. There were transformation that was happening. New direction that began to happen. There were new things set in directions and revelations those that were there that were praying for a long time something was beginning to happen to them and now they were receiving what they needed to continue to move forward in a roman empire dominated empire so if you need that kind of a word today i'm going to invite you to come forward at the count of three one two three if you need that word